Side of the mountain. Actually shaping up pretty nice, sir. Good. Of course, tomorrow will be a little different story. You never know. It could always be a cloudy haze over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay, you're live? We are. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I ask you to please rise for opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance before we convene the Commissioner's Public Meeting. Dear gracious and loving God, we thank you for your goodness, love, and your blessings that you bestow upon us. Lift our eyes to seek you first. We thank you for your mercy and grace each day. Father, we thank you for those that protect us. Tomorrow we'll celebrate the Navy Reserve on our birthday. 100,000 reservists today have served in every major war the U.S. has been engaged. Formed in 1915 in response to World War I, they comprise 87% of the Navy during the war. We thank them on this special day for their service. Lord, we thank you for their lives that are so graciously, graciously served. We'll also honor the Navy CB, whose birthday is on Sunday. Originating in World War II, they have been instrumental in combat operations, humanitarian efforts, and nation building. 
We thank them for their dedication and service. Lord, bless these men and women that keep our freedoms by protection of the seas. As we conduct our meeting, may you grant us your wisdom and clarity, and may our decisions be in accordance with your will. These things we humbly ask in your name. Amen. Morning. At this time, we'll convene the commissioner's public meeting and ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I move to approve. Second. All favor, side. Aye. 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 So carried. And we'll have public comment on agenda items only. No, no, no. Okay. Then it openings. Krista. Morning. Morning. The bid is for deed book repair and restoration. We had one bidder, Co-File, K-O-F-I-L-E Technologies Incorporated. The amount is $54,722. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Reports, Kaylin? Good morning. Morning. Presented for your ratification, our invoice is due through March 8th 2023 to be paid on March 1st in the amount of $1,275.37. The breakdown is as follows, with 56.71% being funded by the general fund at $567,261.66. 1.78% is being funded by grants and other sources at $17,824.47. 4.52% is being funded by RMS at $45,253.83. And 36.98% is being funded by ASCRO at $369,935.41. Okay, thank you. And that the majority of that escrow is going to our children and youth, right? That's our our contribution, or pass through. I think pass, it is. Pass through. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No motion. I move to approve. A second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing them all, there's aye. 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 So carried. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. Personnel actions. <coughs> Jessica. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Director. Um, seeking your approval on the following personnel actions as conditional offers of employment subject to the successful completion of background checks and other employment conditions. For the IT department, Nicholas Neiman. Software specialist, full-time replacement at 2308 per hour, anticipated to start on March 6th. For the coroner's office, Cassandra Hauschnitt, uh, deputy coroner investigator, full-time replacement position, hired at 1928 per hour and anticipated to start on March 20th. In Judge Linhart's office, um, Benjamin Landon, law clerk, full-time replacement, hired at $67,053.29 per year and anticipated to start on April the 3rd. In the prison, Sam Hostrander, a CO1 replacement position at $20 per hour, anticipated to start on March 6th. In facilities, we hired Donald Webb, rehired Donald Webb as a custodial worker full-time replacement position at 13.68 per hour, and he is anticipated to start on March 6th. Um, also for the coroner's office, Kate Kiesling, selected as our chief deputy coroner, full-time replacement position, and she's hired at 28.96 per hour, anticipated to transfer on March 5th. And then also for the prison, Karen Benson, hired as an LPN, full-time replacement at $30 per hour, anticipated to start on March 6th. Okay, can I motion? I move to approve. Any uh, questions or comments? All fair side? Aye. 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 So carried. 
I want to congratulate uh, Kate. She's in the audience today on her promotion. Thank you. And um, you've been a tremendous asset to the coroner's office. We wish you continued success. Thank you. Okay. Um, could, could you, uh, do you know offhand how many open positions we still have in the county? In the county? Yeah. I don't offhand. Okay. I know the last time was in the 30s. Yeah, we're okay. making significant progress with Angier and yes. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. 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 And we continue to encourage um, our department heads to reach out to the schools for our internship program that we have in place. We've raised the, uh, it used to be a very nominal fee of seventy five dollars for an intern. Uh, we've increased that to six hundred dollars. Six fifty. Six fifty. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, we told our department heads with interns, which is a good way to bring uh, bring students here. If hopefully they'll stay and want to take part in the career if we have a position open. Absolutely. They'd be considered. And uh, so we want to encourage our department heads to continue to do that. We've I know next door we interviewed many interns when I was with APL. Um, several stayed in the community, got other jobs, started with PRC, started with the prison, and then either came to APO or went to the sheriff's office, went to different departments in the county, and made a career of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're looking at, um, you know, partnering with Penn College, the Career Services Department, um, for various positions, specifically accounting, um, is one that I'm looking at, um, working with their their uh, business department on, so, absolutely. Great, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Bill. Yeah, one quick question. Yes. What's the total number of employees in the county right now? Is it, is it 568? Exactly. It's about 545. I don't, 545. I don't know exactly, but That's the full-time position. Yeah, that's the, no, no, I'm not trying. That's all reason, is that all full and part-time? Mm -hmm. So full-time must only be about 30, 530. It's about 530. Five, yeah. It's between 530 and 535 full-time, I believe. Yeah. About that. Yeah, yeah. 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 The reason for the question is going up, going by the population of the county. I'm just trying to understand the amount of workforce we have for our population, which is dropping like a rock. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm trying to understand how they're going to manage this into their budgeting uh, over the next year or so. I, I understand it's a very complex situation. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things that I'm curious about. So we're physically 535, correct? A approximately 545. 545. Yeah. We, can, we can get a more accurate sure, number. Sure, absolutely. We, and we will, because honestly, I thought we had more part-timers, but now that I think about it, we changed some of the full-timers at the landfill. And, and Bill, I can um, tell you, when, when somebody leaves the department, they really take a look at whether they truly need the position. Yep, yep. Uh, for instance, when Jessica came in, um, she was down a position, and she waited a whole year to see whether she needed it or not. Right. And mm -hmm. department heads are very diligent about that. I know. The way I look at it is, is um, I said it last week, first of all, number one, do we need it for a strategic plan overall? And what the mission is going to be with that department and how it's going to help the county? And what's the return on the investment? You know, how's it going to be able to save money by hiring someone? For instance, what we did last week with the, right. with the new uh, facility management people. Yes. Hiring those people is going to be about four hundred thousand yep. dollars. It's going to save fifteen to twenty million. It's hard to understand this, but to ask the general public to understand these numbers is very critical. That they won't understand them right. because there's a lot of time and effort goes into this fact. But the only one I have one more question, quick one. When it comes down to janitorial services, why is that such a ear note below? He's in charge of cleaning the whole facility mm -hmm. for all these diseases that are going around, handling all different kinds of uh, unit, unit case things, mm -hmm. dumping the trash in this magnitude. Uh, why would that be such a low pay scale? I'm just, cu I'm just curious. We, we've looked at that, haven't we? We have, yeah. We recently adjusted that position. Um, you know, we do our best to pay market value for um, for our positions, and Correct. I think that's the market um, that's speaking to that. Um, but we've recently adjusted the pay yeah, we grade. Recently brought it up. Yeah. But the, re the reason I asked that question, being a safety coordinator as I was for mm -hmm. years, when you're handling certain materials, absolutely, uh, someone could have a, a stomach problem or whatever, mm -hmm. and he has to do the cleanup on that. So, in part to that, uh, does he have all the necessary equipment to handle that and make is his is his pay grade high enough to cover if something happens to him? It's not like he's working at the hospital. We have it's not a hospital, but I'm just saying someone could cut their self. Yeah, well, right. And you've got contaminated uh, contaminated waste. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I'm asking yeah. the question. That's yeah. Um, I, I would say, you know, I feel pretty confident that our, our custodial team has the tools and resources that they need, but you're right, it's a very, um, it's a very important position, and 
um, they do encounter a lot of what you're well, describing. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So, a um, couple things for for people who are who are going to actually for the public or anyone who's going to come in as a commissioner, it's important to look at where we go over time. So. You know, one of the things when I came in is I asked HR to pull for me a 10-year report on new hires. How many people did we have over 10 years? Because absent some major change in what we do, for example, if we add another court or another judge, right, or if we do something substantive that necessitates it, and, and part of the question is, we're asking ourselves is what are we doing different than what we did before? Watching the number of full-time employees is critical to keeping the budget under control because the average employee is 40,000 with benefits at 60,000. So even having you know 25 extra employees around adds 1.6 million. It, in any one particular year, first of all, 1.6 million is a huge amount of money anyway, right? But when you start to look out over the term of a commissioner, it becomes, if it, even it's 1.3 million a year, over a term it's, it's six or seven million. We need a certain amount of money in our fund balance to avoid raising taxes, right? And so if we chew into the fund balance because we have an elevated number of full-time employees, we're going to be forced to raise taxes, right? So, so part of the dynamic, hopefully, is that, that commissioners keep an eye on that. And obviously, there's a downside of not having enough staff also, right? We, you, you can't run the ship so lean that you can't pivot because it's not a speedboat, it's an ocean liner, right? And we saw the experience we had with the prison that when you try to take the ocean liner into rough waters, you, you know, and that wasn't because we weren't wanting to hire people, it was because we couldn't find people, right? But it was a good learning lesson for us of not, a, not allowing ourselves to get so close. And, and so in all of these things, part of it is getting the public to understand that, you know, even if the market rate for a custodian is $12 an hour, it costs a certain amount of money to live. And to get people to fill those positions, we have to be reasonable. We're not going to pay them $25 an hour. But we can't necessarily say, hey, you have to live on $10. Or That's just my view as, as a as an elected official that um, and so that's sort of the balance finding a balance between making sure that we create an environment where people want to stay and we also are mindful of the fact that over time uh, you know your money goes your money goes out the door so but anyway it's, it's good news that we are getting people and, and it is a good place for people to work and, and I think that we're seeing that so thank you yeah. Okay, at this time we'll recess the Commissioner's public meeting for the salary board. We need the salary board at this time. Uh, <clears throat> Commissioner is seeking your approval on uh, administrative changes to the 2024 through 2027 elected official salary schedule. We identified some calculation errors um, and the corrections are outlined in attachment key. Thank you. Okay, so this was an administrative error. Yes. In terms of what the elected salaries are going to be going forward mm -hmm. for these positions. Great. And and that's based on the three and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I have a motion? I'll, um, I'll move to a motion. We have a truck controlling audience. Oh, I'm sorry. I move. A second. Second. Okay. All favor say aye. 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 So it, it's just so the public understands what happened. These are the positions and what people are going to be paid after this Board of Commissioners is, is through because we always set the salaries for the next board and, and uh, 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 correction, uh, 2023, there is an error in 2020, 2022. So 2023 has changed as well. Oh, can, can yeah. we do that? It was wrong. It was no, no, it was wrong. We voted. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay, we, we had we, an administrative we, error. We voted something out. Uh, we voted what is written there. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. And okay. and it. That was voted on back. In but the, the administrative error came from this school. They put it in the wrong. Right. 
they shorted it. That was voted on back in 2019. Right. Hey, Commissioner, because I'm sorry. of the board's belief in transparency, right. we're bringing this forward. Yeah. That said, you voted on this in December. Right. So we voted is, on it. It's, it's a, not changing a prior decision. It's simply correcting the, the right. Record. That's a, that's a good point. So, for example, the commissioner's salary in 2023 is currently about 77000 It was supposed to be 79000 That's what the correction is there. That affected the subsequent years that we voted on for the four years after. Um, and it's, it's the controller, it's the register and recorder, prothonotary treasurer, coroner. So the amounts are, are correct on the sheet? Yeah, the amounts are correct on the sheet. And the DA rate is set by the state. The district attorney rate is set by the state. Yes. Um, so, okay. And That's paid, just over and by the state. Right. And, yeah. And yeah. Is the DA paid by the state? Yes. No. The well, DA is We get reimbursed. We get reimbursed, right. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. Okay. We reimbursed. So Do we get 100%, Krista, on the DA? I don't think so. I don't think no. so either. No. I think it's we a get. Percentage. Yeah. Like, like, uh, 20%? Boy, those state workers are almost up to what I feel like it's 15, but I can verify that. Yeah, I, yeah there was articles on that. Like, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I right. got the latest. Thing. Okay, and it's on the back of the agenda if anybody wants to, to look at it. Okay, next, Matt. Uh, the well, let's sorry, actually, I'm sorry. We got 5.3. We voted on that. Yep. Yeah. 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 5.3 is uh, yeah. commissioner seeking approval on the, the correction salary board, seeking your approval on the following salary board actions outlined on attachment P. And that is simply in the corner office uh, request to reclassify the chief deputy corner position from the P grade 9 to a P grade 10. Okay. Before we go, I also want to offer my congratulations to Ms. Kiesling. Um, I, miss, I was waiting to do that under attachment C here, but um, I think you bring a lot to the office and that's very exciting. Yeah. I'll move, oh, sorry. A motion? Yes, sorry. Okay. Second? Yes. On favor, sorry. Aye. 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 So carried. Okay. At this time, we'll adjourn the salary board and we'll reconvene the commissioner's public meeting. And we'll go to TDA actions. All right. Yes. Um, so for this, for the coroner's office, um, requesting to um, change the TDA for the chief deputy coroner position from a pay grade nine to a pay grade ten. Okay. Yeah, motion. I'll move to approve. All favor say aye. 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 So carried. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, thank you. Moving on to action items. Commissioner seeking your approval to appoint uh, Marshall Welsh the third to the airport authority uh, until December 31st, 2024. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All favor say aye. 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 So period. We welcome Marshall and thank him for stepping up to uh, do that volunteer service on the board, on the authority. All right, uh, 7.2. Um, this is the action item to what we just did on the salary board. Uh, seeking your approval to approve the administrative changes from the 2024 through 2027 elected official salary schedule due to the calculation errors and approve a correction to the de December 27, 2018, 6 p.m. public meeting agenda. Uh, that's to put the right chart into the agenda back in, at that time. Okay. A motion? I move to approve. I'll second. All for your side? Aye. 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 So Aye. carried. Uh, Maya, you're up. Seven three, three seven five. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. The first item I have for you is a uh, vote to approve the subrecipient award notification. <coughs> it's with Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. This is for the APO grant made that I came to you a couple weeks about for the application. They've approved it. That's in the amount of one hundred sixty-one thousand five hundred ninety dollars. So we have in that office, you had asked me before, Commissioner, um, you know, 
what that is supporting um, based off the um, employees in that office. And there's 16 adult probation officers in that office. So their salaries are well over um, for those positions, over 837,000. So it's just putting a, a damper on that overall cost for us. Uh -huh. The cost of 16 APOs is, and the, in the entire office is? $837,000. Okay. Yeah. And we're being reimbursed $161,590. Okay. Again, this is something we need to talk at CCAP about. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be an 80% reimbursement, never has been. And um, it's dropped steadily through the years. It's down to about 16, 17%. Yeah, because it's definitely gone down since I've been here as well. Oh, it's been dropping like a... Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so important to keep an eye on the number of full-time yeah. people, because mm -hmm. if the state elected officials have an opportunity to balance their budget without them voting to raise taxes, and some of that balancing involves shifting costs to the county, it seems as though they're not reluctant to do that. Um, and I'm not throwing them under the bus, I'm just saying collectively the history has been that more costs get shipped to the county, to the local level. That's particularly hard for counties that, like ours that has a median income that's 15% below the state median income. That's true of all the rural areas of the state. So we want to we talk to our, our folks about that. You know, I know... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I know sometimes people say, well, geez, the state budget is growing so much, but when the state budget is sh it shrinks at the expense of shifting to counties, less affluent communities are going to suffer more, right? Because in Bucks County, Montgomery, Delaware, where the economy is growing, they can shift their tax burden on an ever-increasing number of people buying homes and building homes like Lancaster County. So we need to be careful, I think, when we uh, end up advocating to, uh, obviously nobody wants to spend more money, but shrinking that state budget can really hurt rural communities. Well, the state budget's grown to $45 billion. I know. We went to a CCAP conference two years ago, and two of the top five priorities is to increase funding to APO sources and increase mental health services. And neither one of them has been done. The one continues to drop. The other one hasn't been increased in 10 years. And this is their primary goals to try to achieve. And the state, it falls on deaf ears of the state, yet they continue to increase their state budget. Yes. Well, that's where we have to get our, our folks to make sure we advocate for rural communities because we are poorer. So. You need a motion? Yes. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Uh, the next item I have for you is vote to approve amendment number three to the notice of grant and agreement award we have with the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service. This is for the emergency watershed protection grant. As I stated to you guys last week um, via email, we had a cost overrun in this particular project as a result of just the market conditions. That um, increase in cost is $34,666.67. The good news is, is that it's still 100% being um, grant funded, so there's no cost to the county for the additional cost. It's being picked up um, by DEP as well as NRCS. Okay, motion? I move to approve. Aye. 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 And the last item I have for you is um, vote to the, um, approve the subrecipient agreement with Lake County United Way. This is for our homeless assistance um, program. It's consistent. It's been $153,114. This is for the um, fiscal year 2022 2023. I have a motion. I move to approve. I'll second. Thank you, sir. Aye. You know, I wonder if it wouldn't be helpful, and, and this is to Cindy and to uh, Mary Rose upstairs to put on the agenda the, the numbers. I do the agenda. Oh, you do the agenda. I do the oh, agenda. Oh, yes, you do. I forgot <laughs> that is my yes. tune. It <laughs> might be helpful to put it on the agenda. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. If you're a, a, a citizen or if you're a reporter or if you're here, these numbers go out. I mean, even I, I'm 
used to the numbers, but if it was printed there that that's 34,666. I can do that, but what, we were doing that before and then I, the office told me to take it off, so which is why I did take it off. So if you want me to put it back, then I certainly can. I think for the purposes of educating the public and letting them understand, you know. The, the only thing sometimes, like with the grants, I'll just say, sometimes it's like a straightforward thing, but then it may be different because like you'll see a total cost, but then there's like a cost share percentage. Yeah. Like I don't know how detail you want me to get. Because if we're going to be accurate, I just want it to be yeah. kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to make the comment about this like when we just approved mm -hmm. the United Way does great things and and, and step and agencies in our county. Um, the homelessness pro problem has grown in our community. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think people truly are aware of it. No. Um, recently, there was a report of a, a family that was camped in a tent next to K bar in an empty lot, had a small child, and um, and sometimes people just lose everything for, for reasons that they can't help. Um, and uh, we have to be mindful of, of people that try to help these people get back on their feet. Mm -hmm. The tr truly the ones that want to work, the ones that are run into hard luck. And um, it's a it's a problem that you see nationwide, mm -hmm. and in some of these cities. And um, but it's growing in our community. We have to be mindful of it. We can't ignore it. Yeah, the, you know, when I first started here, the homeless assistance program was like 215 to 250,000 and it, again that was another area that was slashed during the state budget um, they looked as rural counties not having a problem um, then they started doing through HUD um, the Kimmy Vito grant that you had to we did counting I was part of that you would go out at night and you would count to see how many homeless people you could find so that you could get money they stopped doing all of that and it's just more of the same I hate to say this but a lot of that funding is going to your cities your bigger cities they're getting these monies and that's the same that's happening you know from magnitude of these grants so I'll use one as the Department of Justice being one our bulletproof vest program we used to be a hundred percent funded when I came on board I could submit you know 55 um, requests for our bulletproof vest program and get a hundred percent reimbursement and now it takes more time and energy of my time to even get what we get back we got like a hundred dollars back I think probably five years ago it was insulting, actually, by the time you go through all that effort. That's crazy. It's it is. Police officer alive. Absolutely. I totally agree. But it's more, you know, they've restructured everything that it's based off of population size and crime code um, numbers and all of that, that, you know, it's going to these, you know, these cities that have the higher numbers. And it's unfortunate. So just jumping back to the issue yes. that I had raised, yes. right, of putting information on the mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, why don't you use... This is my perspective. Mm -hmm. Use your discretion in terms of, you don't need to write a book, mm -hmm. but I think that putting numbers there helps the public understand where their money goes. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways to help people get educated about the county is to understand that it costs a certain amount of money to, to run things. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't do certain things. Um, and. Uh, you know, the whole big bridge bundling was a great education for people on the cost to fix a bridge. Uh, and this whole levy, we've talked about how the levy project has gotten so expensive between having to use certain types of steel and everything. So I think if you can do it, I don't think my colleagues would object to that. And then, um, and then we're not scrambling around, especially for people who come to the meetings, you know. Look at all that. Must be 200 people out in the audience here. And they're all dying to know what's going on. For the people that are listening, that's yep. fake news. <laughs> There's not 200 people out there. No, no, but in all seriousness, it would, it would help us understand. That, that's my, my thought on it. You know, even if you don't get to read it, but you, even if you don't get to come to the meeting, but you can go online and read the agenda. Right. You know, or watch the YouTube, which has all the details on it. Right. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's all I have for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 7.6. Jerry. Can I just, um, I yeah. wanted to, I have the numbers for the total number of employees. Yeah, I yes. wanted to just come back and share. Yeah. Uh, so we have a total of 564 employees total. 564. And 82 of them are part-time and 481 are full-timers. Now that's not what's on the TDA. That's, that's not the TDA. No, that's, that's people that are employed. That are employed. Currently. That we're writing checks to. Correct. Okay. 
Because actually, if you look at the TDA, and that's what we budget towards. Correct. But that is really helpful, and thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you so much. Hey, Jess, can thank you. you. Jess, can you find out how many is still are open? Yes, I'll are text open. you. Yeah, yeah, text it to me, please. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Miss C. Gray. Morning, Jerry. Morning, Misters. Um, on the employment front, I can tell you that uh, IT still has three open positions, one of which has been open for about two years now. Um, the matter before you today is for the assessment office uh, software that manages the uh, property taxes and such. The annual bill on that is $120,657.65. This is, of course, a 2023 budgeted item. And that's a license fee, essentially? Yes. It's yeah. So, so there's a good example for the public. Just for the, not the privilege, but for the right to use that software, we pay 120000 a year. Yep. In addition to what we already paid to purchase the software. Correct. Yeah. And that's the situation, really, with a lot of this electronic uh, uh, data information and tools. The interesting thing about Ms. Seagrave's comment is that we budget for a much higher number on the TDA. But uh, that's why we wind up uh, sometimes with a surplus. So, so that's that's good. But I'll move to approve that. I'll second. On your side. Aye. 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 So carried. Do you have a question? Uh, the new position that was appointed today does that leave still leave you three or two? That still leaves us with three technical positions. Okay. Thank you. Jason, you still on the line? Yes, sir. All right, 7.7 7 and 7.8, you're up. 7.7, uh, 7, commissioners, is vote to approve the amendment for your 2023 hourly rate increase for the Barton and Judas contract that we have. Barton and Judas is our engineering, our main engineering firm, not our only engineering firm, but our main engineering firm that is currently involved in our 22 acre capping project. They assisted with our six and 10 inch force main project that went down to Greg Township. And they are uh, also right now helping us establish baseline for gas well and well pumping projects. So they are vital to our operation in that we have seen good returns, excellent returns on our investment in Parton and Judas. And I am glad to recommend for their amendment to their agreement. Taking a motion. I'll move to approve. Yes, second. All fair side? Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner 7.8 is kind of a, a funny one because last week I stood before you, actually, right, and asked for your approval of the Keep PA Beautiful uh, program that we support every year from April 1st to April 30th. And as Commissioner Metzger and I was engaging in good conversation, we walked away forgetting to have it approved. So. I am now seeking your approval for the Keep PA Beautiful. And, it, and I also had it wrong. It is uh, keeppabeautiful.org is the actual website that they can get on and register for the project to clean up. Yeah, I had make comments about, uh, you know, when I was leaving for lunch, going down through Basin Street and the mound of garbage was alongside the road and along the beltway. It was just appalling. And I don't understand why people can't wait to the next stop at a, at a convenience store or gas station when they pump up gas and there's receptacles there to throw their trash in why they can't do so. And they um, throw it out the window to make our area, that's beautiful, um, look like one of the cities. And so I encourage people to please keep their trash in their vehicles and dispose of it at the proper location. So I thank you for doing this, Jason. At the same time, I apologize for distracting you. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next thing here. Should we forget to vote now? We'll no, vote. we're going to vote. Okay. A motion? I'll move to approve. Yeah, second. All in favor say aye. 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 And Jason, today I saw in the news that it's uh, National Old Stuff Day. <laughs> so if people out there that want to get rid of their old stuff, I'm sure Jason will welcome it at the landfill. I just yes, we do. We we okay. and uh, just as a side note, we still see wooden cabinet TVs with eight tracks coming into our TV recycling at the landfill. So yes, no there's way. plenty of old things still coming in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Jason, just reiterate for the public. So the transfer station no longer takes televisions, right? Yes, sir. Currently, with our footprint, we don't have the ability 
to house a container safely for electronic recycling. So they can, but they can still come to the landfill for free of charge and drop it off, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and that electronic includes big TVs, the old TVs, what else, Jason? Uh, computers, keyboards, mouses, printers. Uh, the old mindset of if it had a cord, it was electronic is inaccurate, it's not true. Microwaves, the old microwaves are metal, they go in the scrap. Uh, same with a lot of the other stuff. The, the goal of the uh, the act, the Covered Device Recovery Act, was aimed at recovering the cathode ray tubes, the leaded glass in the old TVs. That was that and also the safe disposal of people's computers so that information wasn't being uh, leaked out or people would leave private information on their computers when they went to recycle. So there's also safeguards in that for downstream demanufacturing of the electronics. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, sir. Commissioner comment. Yeah, Just want to continue to bring attention to the the drug issue in our area, the fentanyl problems. The coroner has advised us we're up to nine overdose deaths now in our county. It's just this year alone. I think last year we had 19, and we're only into the third month of the year, which is starting. So, um, again, and I want to thank uh, Larry Stout for his tremendous article last week talking about the fentanyl situation nationwide. And um, I understand it was very well read. So thank you for bringing awareness to it. Public comment. Yes. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, good morning, public. And uh, I'd like to say one thing here. Uh, last week, we listened to a meeting, Tony. You brought up something that's close to my heart did the same thing. We talked about a construction project on a piece of road going through Williamsport to Jersey Shore. I will tell you this. It's a safety quarter, correct? So a safety quarter consists of what? I'd like someone to explain that to me because I've already talked to the state and can't get an answer one way or another. To me, how about the people walking alongside the road? If you don't have a card, you can't get to the other side. I asked two years ago, one month ago, we asked to have a walkway put across 220 up there to get them people across to the stores over there. It's not in their budget. We build a road, we don't have the parts. They asked for an extension last year, they got another extension. We're consistent on this, and the super, unfortunately, the commissioners, the problem is the commissioners have no standpoint in some of this. But I'm just bringing it to your attention because the commissioners cannot do anything other than what they're told. You can't. You can probably ask questions, but will you get a response? I doubt it. It's up to Harrisburg to make some restrictions on this stuff. But a public corridor would see would seem to think you could go from point A to point B to get across that road safely. We've had people hit up there. A lot of stuff aren't reported up on that road. It's an open congested area. The road, the road, they're making significant headway on it. Unfortunately, they're doing that. But unfortunately, people have to get to the other side of the road. And without a car, you don't get there safe. And you really don't get there safe with a car. Because the speed up there is 65, 70 mile an hour. You call the state police. You call PennDOT. Send it back to the state police. So in reference, I get to Harrisburg. I said, what are we going to do about this road? We didn't design. So they definitely designed it. You see what I'm saying to you? But that's just uh, some of the stuff. And, and, you know, and then that's, that's just that article right there. And I don't know what you can do. I really don't know if you have any control over anything. From what I'm gathering through the state of Pennsylvania, it's every man for himself. That's unfortunate. It's the right, it's just the way it is. You got three states, the United States are like that, possibly another fourth coming. You have no control or nothing. I wish we could get some physical control to help the general public make a better understanding how we can do things better. And I, and I know we got, you guys got the technology. Scott, you've been around forever. 
Tony, you got a business. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you got the state. You, you got a, you got a business. It's nice Rick, to be the youngest guy up there. Rick, and you got Rick, Rick you got a business. Go so, so we talked about ADA last week. Yeah. What a kick in the ass. What a kick in the ass. Talk about the ADA. We wait how many years? Run the red flag up. Churches. They just don't want to do anything, but. Don't get free money. Public buildings, they get free money. They'll come to the county, they'll come to the county and say, we need X, Y, Z to pay for this project. Is that not correct? Is that not correct? So why in tarnation don't anyone ever look? Instead of running the red flag up, take a look at it before it happens. But that's that's my that's my spiel. I'm sticking to it. I wish uh, the county well. I don't see it well down at the mall. I think that's a waste of money. Uh, we got other we have other uh, other bridges we have to fix. We have no industry. We just got sent out the road with the largest uh, de the, the re with the largest recycling development going down in Northumberland and Downville, Danville down there, 2.5 billion dollars. Red cap going on down in Northumberland down there, large manufacturer. All the major major players don't want to come to the county. But we put restaurants, micro pubs in, no specific car paying jobs. But again, I understand that your hands are tied. That comes to the planning commission, the city fathers. We load we load oil sock up with all different kinds of restaurants. Okay? And again, what we have in Williamsport. I was going to go shop at the Pennies today in Williamsport. That's why my Pennies come to Williamsport to go shop at the Pennies. And Sears, and we moved them all 45 years ago. Now it's closed. We have nothing. K uh, excuse me, coal is in financial trouble. They just got a reduction on their taxes again. The people, the taxpayers, don't get no reductions. We can't get reductions because we have to pay the bills. Correct? Thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Thank Bill, you. Bill, a couple things. Yes, sir. I actually think the speed limit up there is 55. Now, yes. People may go 65. I understand what you're saying. I, I know that Commissioner Masser, and when I was in the state legislature, we did go and attend meetings up in Linden and I uh, about that with PennDOT and, and expressed the concern the constituents had. The interesting thing is I was we were driving two weeks ago to Lock Haven for an early meeting of the joinder. And we're on the highway, and the, the discussion that we've had with PennDOT five or six years before is this has to be a high-speed highway. Yep. We can't have traffic lights. It has to be a high-speed highway. Yep. So we're driving there, and we stop behind school buses. Yep. The school buses are, and of course they should be stopped, right, yep. because they're picking kids up, but literally the entire highway is stopped. And I thought, wow, this has gone from a high, you know. So, but here's the thing. All is not hopeless. There is the Watts Committee which is the uh, group of people, including the commissioners, who allocate and distribute uh, funds for transportation in the county. And whoever our new elected commissioners are, uh, they will have two seats on the Watts board, and Commissioner Metzger and I sit on it. And we can bring up at Watts the whole question of, is there a way to do something with uh, getting from one side of the highway to the other for, con for constituents? That, that's number one, yeah. okay? And the, and the reason I bring it up, Tony, excuse me, Rick, uh, two things, two things, you guys. You know, you, you don't have the opportunity to see older folks walk across the wagon from a trailer park, Dollar General. Some of them areas up there are six lane high, six lane, six lanes of traffic right now. Yeah. You know, you would think, if you go to any, any geographical place throughout the state or any other state, there's always a walkway. You know, I, I don't... We attended many of those meetings, and yep. I, I don't remember anything about walkways. I brought that up two years and one month ago, and they said it they can't do it because it's not in their budget. And I got that documentation on that. So the, the would, problem is, it's, right it's kind you. of a, it's kind of a, uh, it's, 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 it's trying so to be too many different things. It's yeah. trying to be a high-speed highway, but it's also a commercial zone like the Golden Strip, and and they they said to us it could not be the the Department of Transportation said that the nature of the way the road is, that people will always go beyond the speed limit. But having said that, 
Mark Morawski is 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 been around a long time. Yep. Sal Vitko and all of our Scott Williams up in transportation. We can raise it with them. Okay, so that's that's the first thing. The second thing on the mall. You termed it a waste of money. Um, I'm not sure that I would say it's a waste of money. It's our effort to try to jumpstart through a public-private partnership some development there, and at the same time using our Act 13 money, and at the same time sort of protecting the taxpayers' money. She, you brought a very intelligent point there. Act 13 money. What are you going to do when it runs out? You start a project, you can't finish it. Well, well, remember, it's not a grant. It's a loan. It's a loan. It's a loan. Just so you, and our goal is to try to... No, I understand. But, and you have reason to be concerned. Constituents, but, you know, but, after... But, but would you want to build a housing development down there when you got a whole bunch of warehouses sitting right in front of you? Who says it's a housing development? There, guys, what he announced last week. So mixed, mixed use. He yeah. wants mixed use, but he's going to put housing down here. Yeah. You well, which warehouse is he? Oh, you're talking about way at the uh, you got there? end. Well, you, you can be at a different end of that prop. It's 138. 133. Huge. Yeah, 133. You could be at a different end and not even see them. But, <laughs> and, and you know, there's screening that can be put up, trees can be planted. But just so, because look, okay, then the, fast, the last thing the major industry. Um, it's that what you're really telling us is that we don't seem to be getting major industry. We have yeah. gotten a lot of manufacturers. Seventeen dollars an hour. Wow. When I left in two thousand six, I was I was making thirty dollars an hour. Okay, mm -hmm. your largest employer in this whole county is is the, the hospital. Yeah. Put well, it on the table. We have West Pharmaceutical is expanding. We have Digger Industrials. I, Seventeen fifty five now. That, that came from came from Indiana. Yeah, I know that. Okay. I'm well aware so of that. We are bringing manufacturing but jobs what, here. What happened to the panel firm that was going to build over there? The solar panel firm. Whatever happened to that? There's people that looked at the land. We have somebody interested in it right now that we're part no, no, of the land. You know, that's the stuff that we're has developing. To, it. Yep. Things are happening. That has to come out to the public yeah. and, uh, and have someone say to you in any kind of meetings. And I go to ton of meetings. What are we doing? And I said, well, I think we're doing the best we can do with what we have to work with. Okay. So, you know, taking a lot of your time here. Bimbo industry. Bimbo industry. Where did it go? It went down the road to Allenwood. Bimbo. What are we going to do if we lose our bakery? They don't know. It's in the floodplain. What do we do if we lose that? There's another one down the tube, Shop Back. Shop Back, that itself was a problem from getting go one. Now we're going to be down to about 60 employees, and that's not set in stone. Uh, you raise good points. Yep. There are challenges that the that the uh, all levels of government, well, it, it, and, it, and it, this it, is you know this is all partly tied with it, the whole it, issue. It, it really is. And then yes, the other day I find out that. Little league field they're going to put down there sits on. You can only plant it down three feet. I've been around when that dump was there. Would you want your kids to play on? I heard the other day it's almost at twenty million dollars now. Is that true or false or indifferent? We don't know. We don't know where the city's taking us. You don't have no parking for Executive Plaza. And if I make and one more quick thing, I'll leave you go here. Could you please tell the people that we are a fifth class county? Can you tell them that? And tell them why we're fifth class? It's a college town. It's a college town. It used to be the booming area in this whole unit in Lycoming County, it used to be a boomer. We had enough industry to float a battleship three times over. Can we get it back? I doubt it. People people don't want to come because there's no nothing to do. Thank you so much for your time. You, Appreciate that. Thank you. Can I hear a public comment at this time? Yes, Tom. Mm <laughs> but no, a lot of information, thanks. Um, I tend to view a lot of things as it's a spiritual problem first for the county and for the country. Um, so
to uh, where I was going to start. Um, 1 Timothy uh, 6.8 says, um, if we're content with food and, and the covering, you know, that's what we need to look, be ha- thankful for is if we have that. And I think there's a lot of discontent in, in the world because uh, kids, people expect more out of life. They want more, and that's that's natural. But I think we need to learn contentment. But uh, And the best way to get contentment, though, is through work. Um, and it is tough when you're losing an industry, uh, but at the same time, do what we can to bring it in, and I, I think it's, you're doing as best a job as you can with that. But we also are battling AI. That's going to be a real big um, stopper for people being able to work. Uh, that, that's coming fast, and that's designed to, uh, I don't know, it's, I just don't. Just know it's going to come, you know, and that's going to replace a lot of jobs. It can create jobs, but I don't think as many as it as it is intended to replace. Hopefully, hopefully I'm wrong. You know, I think um, I think energy is real important. Um, you see nonsense about carbon dioxide being a pollutant. We, uh, you know, it's not. But um, think of uh, with. Uh, with energy, that we should really look into nuclear and, and see how we can bring that maybe in, even in the area. Um, they've developed uh, micro plants. I've uh, read where the military will bring in um, when they're operating a certain area, they'll be there, they can erect these things pretty quick and use that power for whatever it is they need, and then they can uh, disassemble them. Um, but uh, another thing I wanted to talk about. With it being a spiritual problem, um, read an article in the paper well, a few weeks, I don't know how long ago, with the hospital and the doctors uh, willing to do transgender surgery on kids. Um, and that's all emotional, emotion driven, I think. Uh, kids go through tough times, and, and especially in today's world, we have uh, just a lot of pressure on kids. Um, and and that when these doctors are, are promoting this stuff with kids, and they don't have to hear it in the schools now. I mean, it's it's just all everywhere, and it, and it get kids gets kids questioned and going before puberty, during pre puberty. If someone feels that much inclined, they need to wait till they're an adult. I mean, really, you know, and then and then really seek some real counsel. But we have people fighting that counsel. Um, and even even so, when all these adults decide to go through that, they still have struggles with it. They regret what they've done. But to push this on the kids, it, the one doctor spoke about doing some top surgery on a on a kid. It's just, that's like irreversible. And they start they start with these puberty blockers. That's that's not known how much damage those things can do. But once they do interrupt, and I wouldn't recommend that for any kid and then if uh, they, they start after puberty there's just kind of continual damage and, and there's been case after case of kids that decided to do this push your parents or or do it behind their parents backs or whatever and they regret it within the three or four years and they're they're just devastated and they say these kids are going through emotional turmoil depression or lead to suicide but the suicide rate for the for the operate people who have been operated is sky high and the depression. They don't tell you that. So um, in Mark 5 28 we have a woman she has the issue of blood and she just said to herself if I just touch his garment she'll be healed. And that's I think it's what we need to do. We got to reach out to Jesus and and, and uh, help him let him help us heal our wounds and our, and our struggles um, and try to come together for each other and not attack people because they're going through these difficult times. We find ways of how to, how to comfort them and, and reach out. Uh, and it's a big task, and I, I think the commissioners, you guys, do as best a job you can, you know, in your positions with, the, with what we do um, with the charities and stuff. But, uh, thank you, Tom. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from the audience? Anyone else? 
Okay. You know what? I, I want to just, I know we have to go somewhere, but look, we do face challenging times ahead of us. And a lot of it is focused around this repopulation because the tax burden is spread down, right? But I think that we have to find a way as a community to try to come together, put aside all of our different political perspectives, and focus on the fact that we need to present to the public a community where people want to come and live and stay. And it's got a beautiful outdoor uh, environment, and we have a lot of positive things going on. And there's no question, Bill and Tom, we do have challenges ahead of us, right? But because if, if, if we can get people to come here and live here, it'll jump and start the growth we need. Uh, we, we've engaged in programs with uh, housing, where we're trying to help with housing. Um, we're trying to use the limited resources we have wisely by recycling them through, through loans like with the mall. Is the mall going to be successful? I don't think any of us has a crystal ball. I think what our feeling is is that if we don't do anything, <laughs> we know that it'll just be an untaxable piece of real estate that'll disintegrate. Um, and that maybe if we do something in a responsible way by loaning some money and the same thing. So, But that doesn't mean that citizens shouldn't come and critique what we do. And don't take what I'm saying as saying that people should not come and critique. You absolutely need to come and critique. You need to keep elected officials informed. Like that walkway, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think of the walkway. But as you described it, what I began to understand is we've created a road where on the one hand we have all this commercial development like Family yeah. Dollar yeah. and the store for equipment right. and the bank. Yeah. And people want to get there. And, and on the other side, you've got a restaurant and sheets and everything. And the states basically put this incredibly dangerous situation right. in between. It's almost as though don't zone it commercial. Don't zone it commercial. Don't create things that are going to make people want to go from one side to the other. I think the state has an obligation to help us solve that problem. And that, that I appreciate you bringing that. And Tom, the same thing with your, your thoughts, you know. I mean, we have to think about it, but we have to find a way to do it. And, and it, both of you have been very respectful. I'm not, I'm not saying it for that. I'm just saying that we need to get people here, and we need to get them to know what's great about the county. Um, and I think we will, right? I think we, we need will. to do a better census. That's our problem. The, the way we come up with the numbers for the census is ridiculous. I followed them around this last time, and it's like... Especially when you have two colleges, and and they're and, and they rely upon them as part as part of our numbers, and yet they can't find them, so they don't mark them down. They, they're doing it over the summer when they're not here. You know, you know okay. it's crazy. We've completed our agenda, and the meeting will be adjourned. Um, we'll meet next March next uh, Thursday, March 9th, 10 a.m. Thank you. You're going to brief us? Yeah. Okay. He needs to sign. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, there's a couple signatures that aren't for us.
that would be the smartest thing. Yeah. God can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you, you're timing it? Thank you. 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 Thank you.